Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Two Mats and a Jeff podcast. Uh, I'm Matt Moyer, along with Jeff Moyer and Matt Bannon, and we're just a couple of middle-aged guys talking sports. I uh, want to remind you, before we get started, to follow us on uh, Facebook and Instagram and like our YouTube channel, uh, two, guy, two, two Mats and a Jeff podcast. So today, we're going to jump into some Philadelphia Phillies. Uh, we live outside of Philadelphia, so Philadelphia Phillies are uh, near and dear to our hearts, and we're going to start a countdown uh, of our favorite Phillies or not just our favorite Phillies, but the best Phillies of all time. And we're starting with our outfielders. Now, one caveat on that. When we were doing our research, we all found some guys because the Philadelphia Phillies organization has been around a long time, way longer than even Matt, who's pretty old. (laughs) And so uh, we found some guys who were really great that we never really heard of who were in the organization long before any of us were born, long before our parents were born, and probably our grandparents were born. So we're not going to include those guys. We're really going to include guys that are pretty much in our lifetime of It'll sports. Maybe tweak that yeah. just a little bit, but uh, we didn't include everybody from the whole history of the organization because we'd have been talking about guys we really just knew from research. So I think, Jeff, you're going to get started. Top get Philadelphia started. Phillies outfielders of all time. And uh, we're gonna do just our top five, right? Sure. So we'll, yeah. uh, we'll, go, we'll go, I'll start with my top five. We'll go number five, I guess, here first, and work my way down. So, um, all right. So my number five uh, is a guy from my childhood, um, from the '80 Phillies. You know, when they won the World Series. So uh, my number five guy is Gary Maddox. Um, I don't know how you guys did it, but I started looking through a lot of their batting things, you know, some defensive things, but a lot of their batting. So, you know, he had an overall 285 batting average. Now, this is overall, so it's not just Phillies. Um, over 1,800 hits, 117 home runs, um, 700 over 700 runs scored, over 750 RBIs. He actually, you know, again, very always always remember him being tall and lanky, so he had a almost 250 stolen bases um again part of the 1980 world series and you know talking defense as we did with basketball with i think a defense with the glove he had an he was an eight time gold glove winner so um Gary Monox is my number five here uh, for the Phillies. Well, you mentioned something interesting there, Jeff, that I think we have to take into account. We'll come into play somewhere along the line is, you know, some of these guys are great players, but how much time did they spend with the Phillies? Now, Gary Maddox yes. spent yeah. a lot of time with the Phillies. So that I know t- yeah. I took into consideration when so I was making my list because there were some guys that were great but might have only been on the Phillies for a couple of years or those kinds of – or I don't think of as a Philly. Maybe I think of them as a different team. Right. Right. So that plays into things. You know, not just the greatest player but greatest Philly. They have to be a Philly. They have to be a guy you think of as a Philly. Right. Well, I was going to say another th- – well, go ahead. Okay. Well, I was just going to say the other thing is when you think of – Baseball and, if, and even Alfred in particular, you either have somebody like Gary Maddox, who's more of a speed guy, not necessarily a power guy, right. um, and you know, some depending on some of these other guys, are more of a power hitting guy and not going to be have the speed. So exactly what I was going to say. I was going to say a lot of a <laughs> lot of things to consider when we're doing all these lists here for Absolutely. outfield um, in our first attempt with baseball here. Okay. Number four is a guy I I was debating if I want to put on just because I at least knew of him. Um, so, but again, looking at stats, I'm like, I, I, I needed to put him on. Um, so it's Del Ennis. So again, it's a guy, at least I heard of him. He wasn't a guy that I don't know, didn't know as much about, but at least I heard of him. You know, we were talking about some of the guys just never heard of, but at least I heard of him. Uh, 284 batting average, over 2,000 hits, uh, which was, you know, super impressive. Over 200 home runs. Uh, he was a three-time All-Star, um, you know, over 1,200 RBIs. Um, so... Like just a you know big time player for the Phillies you know back in the day. Um, my number three is a guy that um, you know he he was a very great player for the Phillies, and I think sometimes he was underestimated. I think a lot of times you know he got you know not a lot of fan support. And that's Bobby Abreu. Um, mm-hmm. You know his batting average was close to 300, 291 batting average. Almost 2,500 hits, 2,470 hits, 288 home runs, uh, scored 14 over 1,400 runs, over 1,300 RBIs, 
over, I mean, he had 400 stolen bases in his career, so again, fast. And then you start looking at other things, two-time All-Star, but he was a gold glove winner, which I really didn't remember. He yeah. was a gold glove winner, and he was a silver slugger of world. So it's interesting because he's not a guy that, for whatever reason, he wasn't yeah. endeared to the fans right. in Philadelphia. And they've talked, I've heard a number of conversations about him recently, and, you know, where is he going to be? in five or ten years in the minds of the Philadelphia Phillies fans. I mean, I think he's on my list. I think you have to include him because yep. he's just hes just not a guy that had a lot of love from well, Philadelphia, but his numbers are his great. Stats, right. That's, you have to right. I was going to say, now I know one thing I've heard when they've talked about him uh, is, you know, when he played, it was, I guess, communication. He had a hard time communicating, and maybe that was part of it. I don't know. But, maybe um, like the press as well? Like, maybe, I guess. But yeah. just, yeah, just in general, because, yeah. you know, being from a different right. country, you know. Yeah. Um, so, my number two, again, another guy. I knew the guy, knew some stuff about him, but, again, didn't see Chuck Klein is my number two. Um, again, just looking at all of his stats, um, 320 batting average, you know, over 300 batting average. You know, yeah. when we think of stats in baseball, like, that's impressive when you think okay. of 300 otherwise. It's not, but in baseball, definitely. Over 2,000 hits, 300 home runs. He's a Hall of Famer, two-time All-Star. He was a Triple Crown winner, which, you know, again, very difficult to do. And he won a batting title as well. So, again, you know, putting him in there. Do you remember what, what when he played? Jeff, because I was trying to remember yeah. when you were talking. I so thought it was, up, I yeah, I, he was like he was in like the 40s, okay. something like that. Yeah, okay. so it was, it was way, it was back there. Okay. Okay. It was back there. Um, yeah, and okay. then number one, which, you know, I'm going to be curious to see where your guys' number ones are, because I'm thinking it's probably going to be dissimilar, but um, is Richie Ashburn. Now, when I grew up, it was Richie Ashburn, <laughs> the commentator. Right. Um, you know, of course, when I was young, I didn't know anything about, you know, the player, and then you start really starting to see about how, how great of a player he was. He again, he bat over 300, 308 for his average, 20, over 2,500 hits. You know, you know, he wasn't a slugger, 29 home runs, uh, but again, over 1,300 runs scored, um, 230 some stolen bases. Again, he's a Hall of Famer, six time All Star, and again, you know, because of the home runs were down, you could tell he had two batting titles. Uh, so that was mine. So I have Richie Ashburn, Chuck Klein, Bobby Abreu, Del Ennis, and Gary Maddox. So, interesting. I have some commonalities with your list, but I guess my list, and I'm swayed to be truthful with what, you know, my childhood and, and guys that, I'm not going to say I idolized because I wouldn't go that far, but guys you looked up to and, and a team that from the 80s, those guys are kind of special in some ways. So, and some of your guys that are on your list maybe deserve to be on my list, but I excluded them because of their age and not really knowing them. So, my number five guy is... Uh, you know, a guy that might not be considered a career Philly, but he was in Philadelphia for eight years, so long enough that I thought okay. he years, deserved I to be on the yeah. list. I think he um, And that's Lenny Dykstra. So, I know, controversial, and listen, the guy now is certainly not a stand-up <laughs> guy. But, you know, nails, so yeah. tough guy. Um, Three-time All-Star, Silver Slugger Award. Um, you know, um, let's see. 289 batting average, so he's close to that 300, which, you know, only in the world of baseball is, is 3 out of 10 a great thing, but it is. Yeah. Um, 388 on, on base percentage, 829 hits, so his, his stats were good, not great. He's on that 93 team that, that is a you know pretty special tough team in Philadelphia. Team, yeah. um, he was that, a tough-nosed player, yeah. Yeah, tough-nosed player. Um, so he's my number I, Not to interrupt, but if we were going to 10 – he was my six, like he was, okay. so he was for right me. There, he was right there. Was right there. You know, I was gonna right. put him in, but you know, I couldn't take him over right. Gary Maddox. So. Well, I tweaked yeah. my list when we, you know, were talking about, you know, who who to include, not include. So I, I took a guy off, and he made the cut. So uh, my number four was Gary Maddox. Um, and you talked about all those great things as defense. There is a great clip, and you can check it out, I'm sure, on YouTube somewhere, where I forget the situation, but the ball gets thrown about in a bunch. And guess who's at home plate defensively getting the ball and getting a guy out at home? Wow. Gary Maddox. They wow. said the guy was all over the field defensively, and there's a clip of this. I saw it. I can't remember the, spe the take specifics. It's but it's impressive, and that's the way he yeah. was. He was all over. Tall, lanky, well, yeah. you know. You think and about it, yeah, he, just would, he looked like, you know. The Secretary of Defense was the nickname oh, yeah. the Phillies had for that's him. Right. I remember that. Um, Eight gold gloves you mentioned, you know, and just, a, you know, again, he's from that team back in the 80s. He was on the team from 75 through 86. So, you know, guy I would consider a career Philly, oh, yeah. although I'm sure he played for some other teams as well. Um, and, uh, you know, so 
that defense. And that's what's interesting, just like when we talked about basketball positions. In yeah. baseball, you know, you have a lot of outfielders, and there's guys on my list here above him that maybe I should have tweaked it that are great sluggers, but their defense was questionable. Um, so there's no Pete and Cavillas or anything. But, no. uh, <laughs> but uh, my, so now my, my number three was Bobby Abreu. And, you know, his stats just hold up. He was on the, the Phillies for nine years, um, 98 to 2006, you know, um, 303 uh, batting average, 416 on base percentage, uh, 1,400, almost 1,500 hits, um, 841 RBI, uh, 13th in the Phillies um, in batting average. All time. All time. Yep. Um, fourth in in uh, on-base percentage, all-time. So he's got some alt seventh in stolen bases, all-time, for the Phillies. Second in walks, all-time for the Phillies. Ninth in RBIs, all-time for the Phillies. Ninth in home runs, twelfth in hits, fourth in doubles, um, and ninth in runs scores for Phillies. So as far as the organization goes, he holds a, a lot of pretty yeah. prestigious numbers for the organization. Well, I think, well, I think the, the thing with Bobby Abreu is that, you know, he was not on so many great teams. That's the other right, right. thing when you think about, you know, yeah, he was between the not early 90, 93 team right. and the, the O-Ott, whatever right. teams. You know? Yeah, and, but just doesn't get the love. But when you look yeah. at those kind of career uh, stats for the team, yeah. how can you not include him in the list? Which we all, you know, yeah. I don't know if you have, Matt, but yeah. we, we did so far. Yeah. So my number two, this could be controversial because his stats don't, don't add up to Bobby Abreu's uh, so much, but is the bull. Greg Lazinski. So that's the the, the bull. Um, let's see. There he is right there up on the wall behind us, the bull. Um, so for those of you watching, for those of you not, he's yeah. he, I have his jersey autographed because if you're a Philadelphia guy now, when you can get back to a game, uh, there's Bulls barbecue at the, at the ballpark. And so for me, he's quintessential Phillies. Uh, great slugger in the outfield. Um, played for the Phillies for 11 years. Um, 281 batting average. Uh 363 on base percentage, one shy of 1,300 hits. Um, so, you know, the stats are great. Four-time All-Star. Again, so he's a guy that is not the, the certain not the Secretary of Defense, no. but a, a great hitter. Well, I was going to say, I have him, again, he would have been, if he did a whole 10, yeah. he was in that top 10 for me. And the four surprised me that he was a four-time All-Star. Like, that yeah. kind of shocked me a little that, you know, he was that, you know. Yeah. Recognized by everybody else as well at the time. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And my number one, same as you, Richie Ashburn. So you know, when I was growing up, he was Whitey in the booth. Yeah. You know, and, and uh, you know, wouldn't know as much. But twelve year, twelve years, he played for the team. Three ninety four on base percentage. Twenty two over twenty two hundred hits. Um, Four hundred ninety nine RBIs. Um, Seventeen hundred ninety four games played. So for the Phillies, so I got some Philly stats. Um, eighth in average. Second in hits. Second in games played, third in runs scored, third in walks, um, which doesn't sound like something, but I, I think that's a sign of a great hitter, yeah, a batter, is a mm -hmm. good eye and, and getting walked in, you know, to, in today's world of analytics, yeah. getting on base matters. Now in 1948 to 59, right. nobody thought about that at right. all. Right. But Richie Ashburn, you know, Hall of Famer, uh, number one as far as my Phillies outfielders yeah. go. Well, my list is pretty similar to your guys. Um so, uh, let's see. My five is actually I'm gonna switch my five. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna move one of my. I'm gonna, based on comments. I'm gonna move my five, one five guy to an honorable mention. I'm gonna move one of my honorable mentions up. So my okay. five is gonna be Gary Maddox because I, I I forgot how much I love Gary Maddox. I, I I mean as you can't see I'm sitting down, but I'm a pretty tall and lanky guy, and just defensively. Outfield wise, that's where I usually play when I played in little league and stuff and everything. So I loved when I think of Gary Maddox, I think of his stance at the plate. Nobody had a wider batting stance. You go look at that the film and everything from way back in the day, or video, or whatever it is now, clips. Um, but his 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 wide stance and his 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 hair, his fro yeah. sticking out of the, the the old style helmet or yeah. whatever. But yeah, I, I love me some Gary Maddox. And you think of you think of that his his eighty Phillies, like he was the like. I'm assuming he was like more quiet of the guys. Oh, yeah. Because, That's you know, my understanding. Yeah, yeah. My, my, yeah. my recollection. <laughs> well, there were a number quiet. of you know well, uh, yeah. big mouth guys oh, on that yeah. team, and he well, wasn't and, one of them. And just and more, you know, in the league as well. I'm right. saying he yeah. wasn't as you know. Yeah. But, so, yes. so, so, you guys influence me. So Gary Maddox moves into my <laughs> five find that spot. clip on YouTube of him covering. Yeah, I gotta find that. He's all over the place. I gotta find that. So my four is the Bull Greg Lazinski. And I'm not going to go over a bunch of stats or whatever because you, you, you cover guys covered them all. But one thing I found that I didn't, I had no clue. Apparently, he finished 
second in the MVP voting in 1975 to Joe Morgan. Oh, jeez. No, I no idea. And I, I never guess, would have guessed that. I, I, no. I, know, I guess that year. Uh, maybe he, he's a little skinnier than maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe, yeah. <laughs> if you look at I don't know. You look at him back. I mean, you know, he played for Reading Reading, and stuff, and you yeah, see the pictures yeah. of him. He was never a skinny guy. Yeah. So well, that's the one thing boy. I'll mention about Luzinski. At least yeah. I know he was a homegrown talent. I don't yeah. know if Maddox was or not. But, I mean, I definitely yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I definitely Luzinski know if Luzinski was. was, yeah. But, yeah, that year he led the NL in RBIs, total bases, and intentional walks. <laughs> I'm surprised. So, but I had no idea he finished second in the MVP at one point. But anyhow, the bull is my number four. Uh, let's see here. My number three is you guys talked about him, Dell, or I don't know if he was on my list. He was, was not on my list. Okay. okay. I, I, that's Worthy of it, but just yeah. in yeah, right. you know, years hard. wise. It's I just hard. I mean, because, yeah. you, know, you know, he's from back in the day. Yeah. And I knew, I heard, like you said, I heard of him. I just never saw him play. I mean, I'd actually sort of have to look up clips because yeah. I never saw him play. But you covered all his stats and everything. Um, I think one thing that I that I came I saw I noticed was he had uh, which we really didn't talk about yet. Um, he had eight twelve OPS uh, on base plus slugging as a Philly. So and that's pretty good. That's, that's a, that's a big, yeah, that's yeah. yeah. So anyhow, so that's Dallas of my three. My two is Bobby Abreu, and like you guys said, he just didn't get the 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 fan love. I mean, you know. Even winning a home run derby contest, nobody like you know. Oh, I mean, yeah. yeah, it was in well, Pittsburgh. It's yeah. interesting now. At least I saw because he got put on the wall of fame, I believe, right? Yeah, he, I don't know. Yeah, I think okay. he did, and that's when he came back for that. Maybe, maybe it wasn't that, but he definitely yeah. came back for one of the alumni things or something. And he yeah. just like he was very emotional about the the fans that you know that he loved playing here. Yeah. Like so, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So. I mean, I'm not going to go over the stats you guys covered. And the one thing I do have down, which I don't know if you guys mentioned with him, he had almost 1,000 walks. And I don't know whether that was as a Philly or just his whole career, but that's, again, a good eye yes. that thing or whatever. Um, and then my number one is the same as you guys, Richie Ashburn. You know, again, I think of him with Harry Callis in the booth. You know, just I never saw him play or whatever. I, I think you guys mentioned his average, but 311, um, 782 OPS, even though he wasn't a power hitter, which is good numbers if you're not a power hitter. And I just saw him one thing that I, I noticed um, that they called him sort of an on base machine. So, and then, you know, if, I don't know if he let off. I don't even know, which I should have checked. Probably. I was going to say, almost seems like he did, but, yeah. but maybe he didn't. But, you know, you get on top of the order. Probably. Right. You yeah. top of the order, you get on. That's 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 money. So, that's your job. Money. Yeah. So, no, anyhow, so that's a word where agreement as far as the okay. number one. All right. Whatever, so. so now, if, what do you got for some other yeah, so I got some Anybody other we haven't talked about yet? Yes, I got some other. So, we already talked about Lenny Dykstra. Um, one of my guys way up there, too, another quiet guy, I think, uh, Von Hayes. Yeah, um, yes. But I th- and I think, again, he was smooth. Like, you know, when he, the way he batted, the way yeah. he ran, um, just, you know, 267 batting average. He was an all star, um, just solid numbers all around, over 1,400 hits, 140 some home runs. You know, uh, we don't go over all the stats for these but, guys, but you know, good player, yes. not a guy that anyone yeah. outside of Philadelphia again, probably never heard of Von Hayes, right. but a good player. And, and I will say, I don't know if you remember, but the Phillies traded, I believe, five players to Cleveland to get him. Really? Five. Yeah, we'll have to look. Oh, sure. yeah, we'll look I, I want to say like I want to say like Juan Samuel. There were some okay. some players, big time guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Five players. Right. Five was a five for one. I remember that. Right. So he had high expectations when he arrived. Yeah. I got Luzinski right up in there as well. We'd already talked about him, and then I have you got to have from now the 08 guys. Uh, a couple 08 guys. Shane Victorino. Um, you know, you know the big thing with him. I again the flying Hawaiian speed. Yeah. He was a two-time All-Star, but he had four gold gloves. Yeah. Yeah. Um, again, uh, I'm sure some of you can, you can mention more of stats with the other guys. Jason Worth wasn't here that very long either, but, you know, I thought he was a great player for the Phils. Um, and great protection for Ryan Howard. Right. And I think that's the thing about Greg Luzinski. Yep. I'm sure with he Schmidt. Yeah, with Schmidt. And then yep. um, just I'll just do two more guys, One you know, both from championship teams. Yep. Uh, Pat Burrell. Yep. Um, Pat Burrell, I should say, I don't say it. Um, and then from uh, when we were talking about the fro, Bake McBride. Bro, bake. Um, bake. Shake and now, bake. Shake you know, and bake when, I at, when I looked at Bake McBride, here's another guy that, again, you, unless you're a Philly guy, you probably don't know much about Bake yeah. McBride. But he was um, he has almost a 300, 299 batting average. Lifetime. O- lifetime. Wow. O- over 1,100 hits. Um, he wasn't a home run guy, 63 home runs. Uh, but he was a one time All Star. He was actually the rookie of the year. For the yeah. Phils? I don't the, know. Okay. That, so I don't yeah, know if he was. I saw that, too, because yeah. 
I'm you not know, sure if he started with the Phillies. I'm not I don't tell know. you the truth because I know he. Played he only first. spent five years with yeah. the Phillies. He yeah. made my he made my honorable mention because for me, yeah, like again, Big that McBride. team, oh, yeah. right. shake and bake McBride, yeah. memories. Um, you know, yeah. memories. Only five years with the Phillies. He spent a lot of time other places. Um, you know, for my honorable mention, I, I included know. the Flying Hawaiian. You know, the four Gold Gloves, and, and and that was a great team. And he spent the most of his career. Yeah. Uh, I didn't include Shane, uh, Jason Worth on my list because I felt like his kind of his best years weren't as a Philadelphia Philly. Maybe I'm wrong though because he did earn I, it I and think, then went to Washington and didn't right. didn't so, earn it there. Right. He he earned his next contract with what, Philly. I think with Jason Worth that he he became who he was in Philly. Maybe yeah. maybe you know. And same thing with Victorino. If you think about Victorino, he was the, so, whatever the rule five. Yeah, it's a rule, rule five, five guy. guy. Yeah. So like you know, they just picked him up. You know, like right. yeah. yeah, I just I just didn't think that Jason Worth was around long enough. And I didn't, I, I have to look. I didn't write down how long no, he was in Philly. I didn't write that because I think the length. Of, but then you know, then again, I included Shake and Break McBride, who only had five years yeah. in Philly. So maybe I'm being unfair to Jason Worth. Do you have anybody else? Yeah, I have a couple guys here. Let's see. Do I have? Uh, let's see. Wrong page. So I have some old guys. A couple <laughs> old guys. Uh, a guy named Johnny Callison. Batted 271 and hit 185 homers in the 60s for the Phillies. Willie Jones, who hit 180 homers and had a 756 OPS in the 50s. I had uh, a guy, actually my five, who dropped out, uh, <laughs> Dick Allen, who hit 290 for the and had a 902 OPS yes. as a Philly. Um, and then I had Lenny Dykstra, Shane Vic, uh, Victorina, I had Pepper and Bonnie's. Oh, and one comment I had is, I was I, I figure you guys wouldn't have Bryce Harper in there. <laughs> Because he's, you know, it's been right, like two too, seasons right, or whatever, whatever. But I just put down Bryce Harper not long enough because who knows? Maybe, I mean, hopefully. If well, we 13 years. There, yeah, well, well, 13 years of contract, you would hope. Yeah, that's what I mean. Hopefully yeah. he ends up on this list down the road. You hope somewhere. so. I mean, so far, and I think what hurts him right now is that the team just isn't good enough. Yeah, so, right. you know, some of these guys are like, you know, the guys from the 08 team and the guys from the 8 Maybe. team because yeah. they won. Right. They're you know they're great individual players, but when you when the team isn't good, it isn't good enough. It's hard to like right. remember that guy. Like you know that's part of Abreu. They didn't really yeah. win anything when he was with them. Yep. Right. I was gonna say yeah. And plus you know, and they weren't just good for a year. They were good for years. Yes. You know, before and after. Yeah. Both yeah. times, oh, right, 08 yeah. and 80. So. Yeah, even like the Lozinskis in that era, they were good in the late se- the right. mid to late 70s, too. Well, you know how what? Many, how many times did they lose to the Dodgers in the NL right. championships here? Right. And he was a homegrown, like a Lozinski, homegrown guy. And yeah, they you know what it took to get him over the hump? Yeah. Pete Rose. Pete Rose. That's what took him over the hump. A guy we yeah. might talk about when we t- yeah. get to our infielders list, yeah. maybe. So, all right, final words. I was just going to say, you know, I think this is. It's different for us because this is our first time doing baseball. Yeah. Um, but again, you know, you know, looking at baseball, you're looking at whether a power hitter or are they just a guy that gets on base. Yeah. You know, the defensive stuff. I mean, there's a lot of different things when you think yeah, about a baseball a lot, player. A lot of aspects. Um, you know, especially the some baseball guys are not very athletic. We think of Greg Luzinski yeah. is way different <laughs> than Gary Maddox. You yeah. know, like extremely different people there. You know, yeah. but yeah, you know. for sure. Well. All right, you've been watching and listening to the Two Mats and a Jeff podcast. Uh, so I hope you will like us on Facebook and Instagram, follow our YouTube channel, and listen to us on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts. We'll see you next time.